Today, we're back with High Low, building two complete EDC kits at two drastically different prices. And this time, we're going with the nautical theme comprised primarily of blues and reds. Kicking things off as usual with the wallet, on the budget end, we are going with the Herschel Roy. If you have been with me for a little bit, you know I only use slim wallets. But many of you have commented in previous videos in this series sharing that you prefer using cash, so this take on a standard bifold is still surprisingly thin. I tested US dollars, Canadian dollars, Japanese yen, euros, Taiwan dollars, and Indonesian rupiah, and as you can see, this wallet accommodates all of them, which means even if you are just like me and typically use cards, this can be a fantastic travel wallet option for you. It's got eight card slots, which is enough for my daily and travel needs, and I bet for you too. And as an added bonus, I just think this colorway is executed so well, with the exterior in this nice navy to keep it clean and unassuming, but offers this pop of bright red with Herschel's classic white and red pinstripe detail when opened. At about 25 US dollars, Herschel wallets in general are a fantastic bang for buck value, and this one is no exception. Sliding over to the more expensive side of things is my own actual daily workhorse, the Bellroy Slim Sleeve in their navy blue soft leather colorway. So far, I haven't been disappointed by a single Bellroy product, and this super slim wallet is no exception. In my day-to-day -day life, I need to carry seven cards total and just one or two bills of emergency cash, and as you can see, with my personal necessities covered, there's basically zero pocket bulk, and as an added bonus, this pull tab extractor is fun and functional to use every single time. Bringing the Herschel back into the mix, we can see the Bellroy Slim Sleeve costs about double our budget option. But of course, they are completely different styles and offerings. Me personally, despite the Herschel being a slim bifold, it's still too bulky and big for my liking. But of course, if you're a heavy cash user, it's a no-brainer between these two. Moving on to the pocket knives, on the lower end, I had no choice to do justice to this nautical theme with the Victorinox Skipper Pro. This is made for nautical applications, with a tool set that includes this large marlin spike, its overall larger form factor, and of course the colorway of this nautical blue, red Victorinox branding, and compass graphic. For the rest of us who aren't living life on the open seas but still love the theme, I would definitely recommend the non-pro Skipper with a much more robust EDC tool set. At roughly 100 US dollars, this Skipper Pro is definitely not really an objectively budget piece, but like I said, I just had to include it in our kit here for the nautical theme. Shooting to the higher end side of our pocket knife, I've decided to go with the Spyderco Para 3 Lightweight with these navy blue FRN scales that are indeed very lightweight. I added a touch of red paracord to tie it into our theme here, but I put it in this nautical theme not just because of the colors, but because I think that Spydercos make sense functionally too. Unlike most knives with thumb studs or thin flipper tabs, the hole on all Spyderco blades enable easy opening with the spider flick, even with gloves on. And staying in line with our nautical theme, whether it's fishery or rope work, thematically, I see those who work on boats wearing gloves as well. And being able to deploy a blade without needing to first remove gloves is a win in my books. As we bring the Victorinox back, we can see that the Spyderco is double the cost of the Skipper Pro, and like the wallets before, these are two wildly different blade carry types. Next up, we've got the key solutions, and right off the bat with the budget end, I have selected this beautiful Night Eyes key carabiner that features this anchored keyring, which means that you can attach your home and office keys to the keyring, but have the flexibility to anchor your car keys to the carabiner for easy detachment, or to clip to your belt loop or bag. Coming in at 7 US dollars, it's definitely a budget option that's so functional with thoughtful detail, including this slide lock, enabling you to have the confidence that it won't open and detach from whatever you clip it to by accident. Headed over onto the higher end side, I've opted for the classic Orbit Key, here in their navy colorway made of cactus leather. I typically go for real leather in almost any application, but for keys, constantly being touched and going in and out of pocket, and for this nautical theme, cactus leather is orders of magnitude more water resistant, and by extension, way less prone to smelling bad with exposure to sweat and water. As we bring the night eyes back into frame, we can see that we have our biggest price spread so far, at more than five times the cost for the Orbit Key. With the key solutions out of the way, let's move on to the torches in these kits, beginning on the budget end with the beloved Rovivon A1. At just 20 US dollars, you really can't go wrong for this compact keyring torch that supports a max output of 650 lumens. Already way overkill for most daily applications, and despite its size and weight, still boasts respectable battery life with up to an hour and a half on its medium setting of 200 lumens, which in general is the absolute maximum most people would ever use day to day. My only beef? an outdated micro-USB charging port. 
but fear not. For just five or six dollars more, you can get the upgraded version with USB Type-C. And like everything discussed in this video, I have linked both of them down in the description below. Moving on to the higher end flashlight, I've gone with the Olight Baton 3 Premium in this rich red colorway. The Baton 3 is available on its own without this charging case. But with the premium version shipping with this USB Type-C rechargeable box that can top up the Baton 3 inside more than three times from a completely dead battery. The form factor of this torch itself, I love. Small and compact, but still very robust with a whopping 1200 lumen turbo mode. And with the included dual sided clip, along with its size, makes for a great option to clip to the brim of a cap for hands-free illumination. Bring back the Rovivon, we've got a five times price delta here, and we've got a more than five times size difference if we're factoring the charging case as well. Next up, we've got the wristwatches, and we have to go with dive watches to support this theme. And on the budget end, I am going with the Casio Duro with the Pepsi bezel. Referred to sometimes as the Marlin because of the emblem on both the dial and the case back, this watch punches far above its weight class coming in at just 50 US dollars, yet sporting a stainless steel case for a very durable and confident feel. Migrating over to the higher end side, I'm going with the entry level mechanical watch in the Seiko 5 Sports line with this SRPD53. Seiko 5 Sports is still killing it in value and to me looks so nice with the sunburst blue dial to really match with the blue of the bezel. This watch comes with a signed bracelet, but I have switched it out to this blue rubber strap because as someone who personally wears watches every single day, I just prefer to have a lighter weight on wrist. A nice day and date complication, the main spot this watch falls short is with its 100 meter water resistance rating, taking it out of the ability to really call it a dive watch. Tying it up, it features an exhibition case back, and as the entry point for so many people in the world of mechanical watches, it's just nice to be able to catch a glimpse of all the components and inner workings inside. Bringing the Casio back into frame, we can see a more than five times price jump in between these two wristwatches, but taking a cue from what a bunch of you have mentioned in the previous high-low video comparisons, I wanted to ring it back in this category for this video instead of going with, say, the obvious higher-end option with something like the Omega Seamaster. Next category here is the notebook, and on the budget end, keeping in theme harmony, we obviously have to go with the right in the rain pocket notebook in blue. With a nautical theme, it's useful to have a notebook that you can literally write on when wet. But just a word of caution, when it's wet, the only writing utensils that work are pencils and write in the rain's own pens. When the notebook is dry, you can use a standard ballpoint pen, and if it gets wet, after the fact, regular ballpoint ink won't run or wash off. But most other ink types like fountain pens or gel pens won't write at all on their proprietary paper, regardless of whether it's wet or dry. This is a fantastic small and slim pocket notebook and a really nice water repelling cover material. This is definitely a budget pick at just $9 for a pack of three, so for the purposes of this kit, at just one, I'm listing it in our tally at $3. Moving on to the higher end option, I am opting for the Traveler's Company passport size leather notebook shell in their navy blue colorway. My actual EDC notebook is this one in their regular size, and I've anchored one of Traveler's Company's very own pewter airplane charms to it. But for this kit, I found this bag of mixed nautical charms on Amazon for like $5. Charms aside, since this is just a silly detail, functionally, if you have been with me for a bit, you know I'm all in on Traveler's Company notebooks. With infinite customizability, including pocket inserts and a multitude of notebook inserts, fantastic leather that, as you can see, patinas real nice over time, these notebooks are true forever items, and I love them. At a combined price of about 40 US dollars and bringing back the right in the rain into frame, we've got a whopping 13 times price difference here. And yet, despite that huge delta, it's still not the wildest gap in this set, which is reserved for the next category. After all, with a notebook, you of course need something to write with. And as we migrate over to pens in these kits, on the budget end, I've chosen the Zebra F402. At just $5, this pen is to me insane value with a full stainless steel barrel and confident stainless steel clip. Great clicking action and a comfortable grip, I just think it looks so nice as well. And of course, since this is all part of a set, as a ballpoint pen, I can confirm it absolutely writes in the Write in the Rain notebook when it's dry. This product overview is short and sweet. I mean, the Zebra F402 does exactly what it needs to do and does it very well at a tremendously great bang for buck price. But moving on to the higher end pen, this is where things get absolutely insane. In fact, I'm not even gonna allow myself to call it the higher end pen. I gotta call it something like the crazy end pen. This thing is at a 90 times price jump from our Zebra, but for the theme, I had to include it because just like the Victorinox Skipper that's clearly for nautical purposes, this pen does just that as well. But I mean, just look at it. 
the deep blue of the ocean glistens across the barrel and cap with the infused silver speckles, while the translucent red finials perfectly embody a setting sun over the water, all coming together with a polished rhodium trim throughout. Designed and made in Japan, to tie it into our nautical theme, the brand mark for Sailor is this lovely anchor inset into the cap's finial. As we unscrew and post the cap, we get to see where a good chunk of the price lies. The rhodium plated 14 karat gold nib adorned as well with the anchor, the founding year of 1911 and really beautiful intricate line work. To pair it with our set, all of Traveler's Company's notebook inserts use their MD paper, which are ideal for fountain pens. But let's face it, unless you're like the CEO of some ocean freight logistics company or something like that, I don't think anyone in their right mind would buy this pen based on price alone. But hey, that is just coming from me as someone who really likes functional utility first. After all, I am a daily fountain pen user, but I just prefer to use the entry level Lamy Safaris for my EDC use cases. If you are a true fountain pen connoisseur, I'd love to know, are gold nibs really worth it? Bringing the zebra back into frame, again, there's an insane 90 times price delta here. And as we line up both complete sets to build the final tally, on the budget end, we have a complete kit price at 205 US dollars, but quickly dips below 200 if instead of the Victorinox Skipper Pro, you go with the regular Skipper. On the higher end, the final tally comes in at a whopping 1,165 US dollars, but of course drops drastically if you opt for almost any other pen. If you are interested in anything discussed in this video, you can find links to everything down in the description. And hey, if you like this format, be sure to check out these earlier videos from this series right over there. I'll leave them on screen for a few seconds so you can choose which one you want to watch, but while you're deciding, I would love your help with the YouTube algorithm if you enjoyed this video. Hit that like button and consider subscribing and hitting that bell so you'll be notified the moment new videos just like this one drop.